Hello there. Regardless of the quality of your camera or of your telescope, one thing's for sure. If you haven't got the right tripod, then you're not going to get very good pictures or a very good view. Now, I have used a whole multitude of different tripods over the years, and indeed, I own many. Over the time, I've settled on, well, just a few for different applications. And I want to talk to you about the features that distinguish one tripod against the other. They go from the, the monsters, like this one, to the minis, like this little fella. And each of them serve a purpose. Each of them have a role. Well, first of all, when I'm using a, a professional video camera, something like this, it's a heavy piece of kit, and correspondingly, it needs a heavy tripod especially if I'm using a telephoto lens. This isn't a particularly long focal length lens, but if I'm using a, a big, powerful telephoto zoom, then I need to make sure that there's the minimum amount of vibration and wobble transferring from my hand, and indeed from the environment, the wind, through the camera and to the lens. I want the most stable image, and as a consequence, I plump for what I think is one of the best on the market for professional applications, and that's the Ronford Baker. This is the 2004 fluid head. It's an industry standard. It has been going for, for, for decades, and really, it, they got it right very early on in design. It has a beautiful, smooth, fluid action when you pan. It has a very faithful stop, so when you stop in a position, there's no slight return to any position. Um, the downside, well, you can see it's a lump. And, you know, I don't go to the gym, but I do carry cameras, and that's what you have to do. When you carry these up and down hills, then you know all about it. The other downside is that they have a price to match, quite reasonably, because they're precision, astonishing precision pieces of kit. But really, you know, we're talking many thousands of pounds for, for the fluid head alone, let alone the tripod that you put it on. And so um, for the average user, it might be um, a little bit of overkill. So there is a, a range of other tripods um, that are made by different manufacturers and different heads as well that serve, as I say, different purposes and each of them have their merits. Over the years, I personally have come to trust the brand Manfrotto. Um, they do a fabulous job, a bewildering range of tripods, that's the sticks, the three legs and heads, the bit you stick on the top, and um, each of them serve a different purpose. In fact, over here, this is uh, my parabolic reflector. I use it for recording specific sounds, natural sounds. And I like to use this pistol grip head, which is made by um, Vanguard. See, I'm not brand specific. <laughs> it's a good piece of kit, actually, the Vanguard. But um, what, the way it works is you squeeze the pistol grip, that releases the head. I can position the uh, parabolic reflector to point at the sound I want, and then I can let go of it. And that way I don't get any noise transfer from my hand to the microphone. It's actually a head that's designed for stills cameras. Personally, I don't like using it for that for lots of reasons. I won't go into all of them, but one of them is, even though you can position it, it's not fine tuning. You certainly can't use it for video because it doesn't pan comfortably through a horizontal plane and a tilt because it is a ball joint. Um, great piece of kit maybe for macro photography if you were into that. But um, for me, with the parabolic reflector, perfect. I have it mounted on Manfrotto legs. These are alloy Manfrotto legs, and you're going to hear more about Manfrotto because they're really a well-known brand and for very good reason, because they make excellent kit. And I've used Manfrotto gear for many years, as you can probably see by the frayed appearance of this piece of equipment, which has been out in the field for many a storm. If we move to what might be, um, well, it's still a, a professional setup, this, in every way, but a slightly lighter setup than the, uh, than the video camera I showed you earlier. Um, this is my Canon camera with a, with a 500 millimeter telephoto lens. It's a heavy camera still, and a big focal length, which means the 
every, everything that you see is magnified. It's not just the object that's magnified, it's movement. That's why you want a robust tripod. That's why you want something solid that's going to hold your piece of kit. And this uh, Manfrotto 504HD is a really strong piece of gear. It's a really very good head and I use this for stills photography and also uh, for uh, shooting video on my DSLRs. So very often I will uh, use a 500mm, that's a, a long focal length lens, um, using a, a Canon DSLR and I use the 504HD fluid head to shoot video and stills. And it's really good for that. It's a really good piece of kit, this head. It's got a smooth action, it's got a smooth uh, pan and tilt, so it works through both planes very comfortably. It's got a drag control, so you can set it just how you want it. Whoop, nearly lost my camera then. It's also got various things that you're supposed to turn on to lock it. <laughs> there you go, not gonna lose the kit now. It's got drag control, so you can make it harder to move or softer to move, depending on the action you want. Um, the legs are, are also uh, Manfrotto legs. They're quite robust, these ones, and they do extend to quite a height. I'm going to come back to height in a moment. But what's really important about this setup is if I was going to shoot video, I need to make sure my camera is level. If I have to fiddle with the legs to get that level, just the height of the legs, I'm going to be around forever. So it's really important if you're shooting video to look for a head and legs that have a ball joint. It's called a bowl in the, in the business. So you want a bowl tripod and this one means that I can just very quickly look at the level that's built into the fluid head, the 504, find level, lock it off, Bingo, and that means when I pan through the horizontal plane, everything stays on a nice even plane. It's heavy. It is quite heavy. It's quite a lump. So if you wanted it for lighter weight photography, or indeed for using a spotting scope, it might be a bit of overkill. Manfrotto makes some cracking tripods and fluid heads that are ideal for use with a spotting scope. Um, they're also actually very good for use with a little video if you can be if you're not too worried about the leveling if you if you're happy to spend a bit of time leveling by using the tripod then these work perfectly well for video they work perfectly well for most stills applications as well and um, this head is the is the 701 the 701 HDV really nice light piece of kit and that's all you need for a spotting scope something strong and something physically light because you don't want to be carrying a lump around with you, do you? If you've got your kit bag and your sarnies and your bird book, the heaviest piece of kit you're likely to be carrying is, is the telescope itself. And so you just want something that's strong and robust and easy and quick to set up. This uh, Manfrotto tripod has quick release legs like that, which I really like. Very quick to put away, very quick to set up like that. That's my favorite of all the, all the, um, systems I have to be honest with you for releasing the leg. The other thing is that the legs are made out of carbon fiber as opposed to alloy. Both these, uh, this tripod and this tripod and indeed the one to my right which I'll come to in a moment, they're all made out of carbon fiber which is a very light very strong material. Now I mentioned this tripod to my right, it's smaller still, it's made by Gitzo. It's actually beautifully designed, beautifully machined. You wouldn't want to put a heavy camera on this, it's just not sturdy enough. But for a, for a telescope, for spotting birds, and particularly if you're in an area which is relatively sheltered, so you're not getting gusting winds on the coast. Maybe if you're doing sea watching, you want something a bit more robust. But if you're doing lots of work, say perhaps looking across um, lakes or from hides, this is really perfect. And I can tell you, it is really very, very light indeed. It's a real flyweight. And in fact, if I take this uh, scope off the head, you'll, you'll see the whole thing it's tiny and it, I promise you weighs virtually nothing. You could easily carry this around over your shoulder or perhaps strap your kit bag all day and not worry about it. Another nice feature on this little Gitzo head which is great for using a, a scope is that it has one lock for both pan and tilt. You haven't got a pan lock and a tilt lock separately so when you pan onto your object and tilt onto it you lock that and it's 
absolutely solid. Really nice design feature that. Like it a lot. Um, there's a lot more to tripods than meets the eye, but I hope that's given you something of a guide. Look forward to seeing you soon.